Greetings everyone and welcome to another Porting Via Port Stream, the show in which I drink port and get another board into QMK and or Via. But tonight, no port. Well, I'll be porting a board, but no port. I'm drinking some cider instead. Check it out, check it out. Here, I'll give you guys a better view from this angle. Here we go. This is Two Town Cider House Outsider. And yeah, if you're wondering why did I pick this particular cider, it's because it's a pun. Outsider. I figured I'd try it out. <laughs> yeah. Usually, usually I try to pick things that look interesting, and this one definitely caught my eye. So yeah, let's see how it tastes. Let's see how it tastes. I believe I picked this up from from the local QFC, actually. There you go. Let's see how it goes. Um, basically 5% alcohol made with Jonah Gold apples. I've never heard of Jonah Gold apples. Uh, 150 calories and apparently it's produced by, or produced in Corvallis, Oregon. You guys don't know where Oregon is? Oregon is just about three hours south of Seattle, Washington. Fairly close to us. In fact, whenever there are meetups, we tend to go visit each other. Like, some of us go down to the Portland meetups, some of the Portland people go up to the Seattle meetups. So hopefully we'll be able to do all of that soon. But look at that, this is a, looks like it's a very light cider. Tastes like a light cider too. I can't even taste any of that alcohol. Interesting. Okay. Tastes just like apple juice. Not sure if I like that. Sometimes I like sometimes I like that um alcohol bite, but this one this one tastes just like apple juice. Zark says, Oh hi Merlin, oh hello to you too. But yeah, as you guys can see from the stream title, today we are porting over the banana split. And if you're new to the community, you must be wondering, but Merlin, a banana split is a switch. How can you take a switch into QMK? Well, here's the thing. Long, long ago, I'd say this is probably around 2017, so long in terms of community standards, there was a PCB called the Banana Split, manufactured or designed by the Van Keyboards, the same people who make the minivan. And yeah, 60% um, PCB. It was actually I believe it was the first PCB in existence that supported both standard layout like I have here, um, arrow keys on the bottom right, and split spacebar, which is why it's called the banana split. So yeah. Oop, Keldrop, it's already building anything today? Well, I am building firmware for this guy right here. So as you guys can see, I've got a banana split in, in this guy. This is... I'd say one of my first builds, I was really into wooden cases back then. So I started looking for one. This was the only one that I could find. Um, this is a banana split with a stainless steel plate featuring Gateron yellow switches. Um, this was so long ago, actually. I feel like... Yeah, this was so long ago before I even started lubing switches. These are not lubed. I can feel the scratch. I can hear the scratch. <laughs> Yep, we'll probably have to rebuild this board at some at, at some later time. But yeah, it's also featuring featuring SA1976, one of my favorite SA sets. But you're like, Merlin, I thought you don't like SA. That's true, I don't like sculpted SA. I like uniform SA, such as this. This is all row three. Road 3 SA. This is the kind that I can type on. And why this board out of all the other stuff that I need to port over? Um, mainly because I put Olivia on this and I, and I remember thinking to myself, hmm, there's another board with SA on it. I should probably fish that out. So yeah. Yeah, this is the Carbon G67 from Neo Keys that I built last Saturday. Kawhi Baltimore says, what acoustic effect does a wood case have? Um, I'd say it adds some some thock. 
Um, I'd say this this is not the best example simply because I have like a stainless steel plate. So I can definitely hear some of that metallic ping going on when I'm typing on this. Here, let me stop my music. You guys be the judge. Be the judge of the sounds. For those of you who don't know, I believe Minivan, Minivan, the company that made these PCBs, was bought out by TKC, if I, if I remember correctly, because I know you can buy minivans from TKC now. Let's see, does TKC sell banana, b banana splits? Uh, no, but here. But the newest, the newest posting I can see is from 2017. Let's see, let's see if this even is, is a thing still. Look at that. Banana split 60, link to sales. Cannot. Ooh, okay. It's long since gone. What are the best linear switches you have ever used? Um, I don't think I have a best one per se, but there are quite a few that I like. Um, let's see, my, my top ones are probably any anything JWK. JWK Lavenders, to be specific, out of that entire lineup. I like Gateron Black Inks. Um, I like Telios. I like... I like some of the Franken switches that I've made. I like Linyars. I like, let's see, what else? Um, just yesterday, actually, I purchased the Gateron KS3s from Canon Keys. Let's see. I think I've got that link there. These ones are very close to, to Linyars. So let me grab that link really quick. It's, it's over on my Discord channel. But yeah, here we go. These guys right there. All nylon housing, top and bottom. So they give you a very nice deep thock. Which, I don't know, if, if I ever rebuild this board, I might put those in here. Let's see, actually, let's show that on stream as well, since I just linked it. There you go, this guy right here. Gateron full nylon, yellow switch. Look at that, fairly cheap too. 230 for a pack of 10. Yeah, so that's probably what I'll do. Probably what I'll do. Anyway, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time on Tuesday nights, Tuesday nights are more of my educational stream. For those people who want to learn how to do this process, getting a board into QMK or getting a board from QMK into VIA or both, depending on our time. But yeah, this whole, like, I try to talk about the process, how it's done, and I do it live. So typically speaking, since I'm presenting while doing it, it takes me roughly an hour and a half. In some cases, I've even had to take a multimeter to probe out the PCB. In those cases, it takes two hours. But this whole process, probably fully doable in less time than that. So without further ado, let's, let's get started. Here, let me pull up what we need to look at right here. Um, this board is actually already in QMK, so a large part of that is already done. Actually, let's, let's just do this. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I'm just setting up my workspace here, guys. Lots of QMK updates, lots of VIA updates, so yeah. Dum da dum da dum. Oh, wrong command.
Okay, let's see, I think we got this good now. Let me check out a branch here. All right, here we go. So what I have right here is the code or is QMK firmware directory for all the van keyboard stuff. So as you can see, they make products such as the banana split, the caravan, the minivan, and the road kit. But as I mentioned earlier, they have since transitioned over to TKC. Um, not sure if this is 100% true, but I believe TKC bought out the van keyboards. So if I'm wrong, someone please correct me. But today, today we are focused specifically on banana split right here. See that? So all this code. Oh man, look at that. Look, look at those dates. I think the last time this code was touched was probably 2017. Um, probably ripe for for a refactor. That boot magic enabled is still set to yes. Typically, we've moved that over to light. Um, I won't do any of the refactors tonight. I'll do that on my own time. But we, oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of these things are are old and, and can be done away with. But tonight, tonight we will specifically be covering how to convert this to VIA or how to add VIA support. So first things first, um, adding VIA support to a keyboard starts in the firmware. You know, there are two places that you need to edit. You need to edit the firmware itself, and then you need to edit the VIA file that VIA reads. So we're gonna start with the firmware first. Let's go over to, to key maps. Creating a VIA firmware, a VIA enabled firmware, is as simple as creating a key map that's VIA enabled. So if you look over here, you'll see all these directories. These are all people's key maps. So you see one called default, which is the default, then you see someone named Nick, someone named Taljo, all of these guys is, are their own key maps. Is that a staff in the background? Yes, it is. It's the most magical staff in the world. All right, so you can either make, make a new one, a new directory, or copy an existing one. I prefer to copy an existing one because I'm, I'm lazy. So here, let's just copy the default one. But make sure you rename it as via. There we go, via. So now you have a key map called via that is more or less the same as what default is. So a couple things we can change up over here. Just change up things here. Uh, when you're in via, is that a Fender Stratocaster? Yes it is. Here. When you're actually in VIA, let's see. Let's let's actually bring up VIA so you guys can see what I'm talking about. There we go. There we go. When you are in VIA, like so, right? When you're in VIA, you have on the top left here, there are four layers which you can transition to by clicking zero, one, two, or three. Um it is a VIA mandate that you can have only up to four layers, right? And if you don't define all these four layers, you could end up with having garbage in your key map. So the way to make sure that we don't have garbage in our key map is to define all four, even if we're not using all four. So here we go. Let's go copy and paste, copy and paste. Oh, actually, let's not do that. Let's just copy and paste the blank one. Makes my life easier. And hold on. This layout macro is called layout base. Is that necessarily what we want? I don't even know what layout base looks like. Um, 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 um. When, when in doubt, when you see a layout macro like this and you don't know what it looks like, the best thing to do is to actually go to QMK Configurator. Uh, 
Here we go. The Xenophobia says, Sidecar via supports more than four layers, but it's dependent. It supports four by default, but you can configure how much less or how much more using a config file. But yeah, here we go. We want to go to, what's this board's name? Banana Split. Like, I'm a very visual person. If I can't see it in my head, I'm going to be completely confused. So, banana, so layout base looks like that. Like so. Okay. Um, Upscale says, I wish I can stay, but have to go. No problem, man. Thanks for dropping in, even if it was for a few minutes. So, actually, I'm going to change what I said. In VIA, I like to start off with the most basic layout and the most basic key map. So, let's go back. Let's go back. Maybe default was not the correct one to copy over. So, let's just... Let's just find a something that's layout ANSI here. And apparently no one uses layout 60 ANSI in the key map directory, so that sucks. Uh, what else? Let's go into key maps. Well, great. Okay, that sucks. Zach, he's at sub, sub Merlin, sub T2. Um, okay, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Since the... Since this guy doesn't have any any key map that uses the layout 60 macro or by layout 60 ANSI macro I mean it's the standard layout one so it's got the 6.25 U spacebar flanked by 1.25 U mods we are going to go over to QMK and see if I can steal a key map come here little key map where you at let me steal one Give me a 60 key map. Ah, there. That should be sufficient. Found one right there. Poop. There we go. That's a good one. And then I can get rid of these pound defines. No need to do that. Perfect. Xenophobia, that is exactly where I stole this. <laughs> But here, um, I don't want to have to make these all blank, so I'm going to see if I can steal it from someone else. I think, I actually think I've got, I should have something. I should have something. So I'll steal it from my own key map directory. Perfect. I found it. Yep. It's right here. I found a key map to steal from, but it's mine, so it's it's not really called stealing, is it? There we go. It's not stealing if it's already yours, right? Okay. So, let's see. KC Trans. Just a few things I need to change. This was from my control layer. So... Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Don't need to change anything else, perfect. Let me change some spacing here. There we go. Looks good. And then, oh, there, let's make it consistent. Was that consistent? No, that was not consistent. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so like I said, you need to define all four. So let's do this a couple more times here. Zero, one, two, and last but not the least, three. Oh, 
Okay. So, just to make sure everything compiles nice and easy, we are going to do... I'm just going to try and compile it really quick. And there we go, it's compiling. It's making a firmware with this key map. Not via enabled quite yet, but soon. But soon. So, just as a recap, what I did was I, I just created a key map with four layers. It di didn't really matter w what was in it. What mattered the most was the layout that you started with. So in this case, I picked the most generic one. Layout 60 ANSI, which is your standard 60. All right, next thing you want to do is get rid of all the stuff that you copied over. It's not very helpful. Delete, delete, delete. Get it out all there. And add a new file called rules.mk. This is where you enable via. This is where the magic happens. So the first incantations you want are via underscore enabled equals yes. Like so. And just by doing that alone, you have enabled via support on this firmware. Next time you compile it, you'll have a via enabled firmware. Next up is mainly an optimization issue. LTO stands for link time optimization. You do LTO underscore enable. Let me increase the size here so you guys can actually read what I'm typing. Here, LTO enable equals yes. So what that does is it ensures that your firmware is as small as possible. Um, most of our boards that are QMK powered, that are VIA supported, are still using an ancient and slowly dying AVR chip called Atmega32U4. It has very little EEPROM space, very little flash space. So by doing it like this, you try to maximize the amount of your memory. So yeah, with that said, we're almost there. The next thing that we want to do is to go to the config.h file, like so. Here, so um, the way VIA detects what board you're using, so like if I, if, if I had three boards and I plugged them all into VIA, the way that VIA detects which board is which is through these two lines up here. These are lines 24 and 25, the vendor ID and product ID. Um, as these have to be unique, and to be officially unique, like unique across the entire planet, I believe it is a $5,000 a year subscription to the powers that be who will bless you and sanctify you and all that. But, you know, not everyone can afford to spend 5000 a year just on product ID, vendor ID vetting. So... Typically, as long as you don't interfere with anyone else, you can make this anything you want. If the powers that be do come after you, then sure, change it. But, let's see, F-E-A-E? -E. I, think, I think this is actually the VAN keyboard stuff, so let me just take a peek in their other stuff. Or, you know, let me just open up another browser window, window here. Uh... Does the VAN keyboard actually have anything currently in VIA? Because if they do, we'll just use that vendor ID. The VAN keyboards. Minivan, there we go. The mini, the minivan's in there. Okay, let me just... Let me just take a peek. Just take a peek. What did they set it to? Zark has a legit vid pid for gin. Who did you bribe? Which child did you sell? <laughs> which 
Which organ are you living without? Let's see. Finally got to zero X F E A E. Is that correct? Yeah. Um. Looks like. Looks like the Van Keyboards has their own vendor ID and product ID already, so we don't really have to do anything there. Perfect. That's the way I like it. That's good to hear. So with that, we can actually just, you know, remake the firmware. Let's see, Zark says, those guys allow you to allocate one for yourself if it's an open source. Ooh, okay. Is it free? I guess that's the most important question. Is it free? And if so, can just anyone do it? <laughs> Like as long as they say, oh, I contribute to an open source project. Let me, let me grab one of these. Or do you have to be a collaborator such as yourself, Zark, an actual collaborator on an open source project? Okay, there we go. We have it. Just requires a PR to claim one. Ah, okay. Um, let's see. Well, I've got firmware, so let's flash this board. Let us flash this bad boy. There we go. Flash this bad boy. Like, here we go. Boom. Mm. Oh, good. The reset button is easily accessible. Perfect. I don't need to like disassemble it and everything. My neighbor is drilling something upstairs. I can hear him. Be quiet. I'm streaming here. Okay. Let's do this. Let me plug in an extra USB cable. Let's grab this guy. Plug it in. Oh, shoots. I've got the magnetic one. See? Like, as much as I like the magnetic ones, it's always like, a, it's not like I have my magnetic cable always on the ready. So I figure I'll just pull it out. <laughs> it's, it's easier to just pull it out and not deal with the magnetics. There, got it. Got it out. Just get another magnetic cable. I know, right? There we go. I got it out. Let's leave it here. Like, I thought it was such a great idea. Because it, it did work. It worked pretty well for me. But then... And then I didn't have enough magnetic cables. And it ended up screwing me over. Alright. We're going to flash you. Let's press that magic button. I think I pressed it. Guess we'll know once I press flash. Flash! Lincoln, erasing flash. There we go. It is flashing. Excellent. And it still works, of course, because it's got the VIA, VIA firmware. No problem. Perfect. All right. All right, perfect. Okay, the only thing I need to remember from this is... All I need to remember is the product ID, which is 8870. Okay. I'll write that down. Don't need to worry about this anymore. No, why don't I do the rest of the programming on this guy? Since I missed typing on him. I missed typing on this guy. Let's put away the carbon, and let's work on this. Okay. 
Next part, next part that we want to do, now that we have the firmware all taken care of, the next thing we want to do is, is go to caniuseVIA.com, like so, and go to their document section, right here it says docs, and in here, this docs specification guide covers all the properties of the JSON file that VIA consumes. So this JSON file needs to have a name, the name of the keyboard, the vendor and product ID, which I was talking about earlier, um, lighting. You know what, does the minivan have lighting? I don't even know if the minivan has lighting. Let me just take a quick peek again. Does it have lighting? I, I think it does. I think it does. Yep, there it is. RGB. It's got RGB. Let's just let's just double check for sure. It's got no backlight, which is odd. I swear there's backlight on here. Yep, I see holes in there. It does support backlight apparently. And what? Right, I don't want to have to take apart the board to to verify, so I'm just gonna do a quick quick search. The van keyboard's banana split, and let's see if I can do an image search there. Banana split PCB. I know there's an image of a van on the PCB, so there it is. That's the very first edition of it, if I'm not mistaken. It's the very first edition. See, it's it's it supports in-switch lighting, but I'm I'm almost certain that it does not support. Anything else? I, I'd say I'm like about 95% sure that RGB underglow is not supported. Hmm. Anyway. 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 Let's talk, let's keep talking about the properties of this JSON file. You have lighting in there. Then the matrix tells you how how big it actually is, the rows and columns, followed by the layout. So this is the part that I like to start off with. And the way you start off with, with doing this is by going to Keyboard Layout Editor. Keyboard Layout Editor. There we go. Keyboard Layout Editor. And basically you want to create the layout that matches your board or that matches the layout that your VIA key map has. So as I said earlier, we picked Layout 60 ANSI, which is your vanilla generic standard 60, like you're seeing here. Let's start off by removing all the legends, like so. Cool beans. And then, let's, let's just start coloring it for now. No, actually, let's just do that later. Let's just pre-populate it with some numbers, which I will explain in just a bit. As you can see, I am putting two sets of numbers, or one set of numbers, on the top left. I'll explain it briefly. You can watch me set up here. <laughs> oh man, I can feel all the scratch in this. Holy crap. Yeah, this is this board was built well before I started lubing anything. <laughs> Shoots. Okay, let's see. What well, what was I gonna do next? Oh yes. Okay, here we go. We are back here, so what you need to do, 
what you need to do next is go to your keyboards.h file. In our case, it's bananasplit.h. Click on it, and you'll see all these layout macros here. You'll see layout base, layout h, 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 k, banana. <laughs> I like that name, h, h, k, b, and the b is used for banana. And you have your standard 60 NC, your standard 60 ISO. So yeah, this, this is the layout th that we want. So, um, you want to pay attention to the top half of the layout macro. This, this entire thing here is called the layout macro, but we only want to pay attention to the top half, which is called the physical matrix. You'll see all these numbers, K06, K49, K34, all that good stuff, right? K stands for key, or at least I've always called it key. Um, the first number, stands for the row number, and the second stands for column. So if you watch my advanced tutorial over on YouTube, uh, you'll learn that you can actually name these anything, like anything you want. You could call it names, you could call it Noxygen, Xenophobia, Zark, whatever. But it makes more sense to name it like this, because it, it just makes more sense. Like for example, if you name it by row and column, K04, like that, you can cross-reference it to by going to your config.h. You're like, okay, row 0, 4, okay. So that would be the row pin is connected to B0 because it's row 0. And column 4 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is F4. So the pin, so the switch labeled K04 is connected to B0 and F4. You know, it, it's it's just a lot more, a lot more readable that way. But yeah, that's that's beyond the, the scope of this. Um, like I said, open this up. Go to your. Wait. Yep, this is it. Go to layout 60 ANSI and only pay attention to this top half. We want to take all of this. And literally copy it over to here. Yeah. So. This top row goes 0, 0, 0, 1, all the way to 10, 11, 12, 13. Perfect. So yeah, here comes the boring part. Oops, we don't want that. We want 3, 4, all the way till 13, because that's what we were seeing earlier. It's basically just copy and paste. This is probably the most error prone portion of the porting process. If you watched my previous stream, you know that sometimes I skip keys, sometimes I skip numbers, sometimes I, sometimes I mess up in many, many ways. Well, yeah, take your time doing this. I know it gets rather, rather redundant and rather tiring, but it's doable. Just take your time. All right, next row. What's the next row? Next row is one zero one 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 three one nine ten eleven twelve thirteen. Okay, also goes up to thirteen. Sumex redeemed hydrate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um. Oh wait, I'm still on row one. Okay, well, let's do this. Row one it goes one all the way to thirteen, like so. Let's just keep doing it slowly, slowly but surely. You know, um, one of the side effects of me doing this for the last what two years at this point, porting with ports, porting via ports, is that I've gotten very knowledgeable on how large, how large keyboards are and all that. And there we go, 113. Okay, we still have three rows left. Noxygen redeemed spoken word. Oh, I don't know what this, what that does. I just had 3K points to burn. All right, okay. So spoken word is a form of poetry in which you read prose in dramatic fashion. So I'm neither a poet nor a very good writer. So where I extract my prose is actually from 
a typing site. <laughs> I know I haven't done this in a while, so this is gonna be fun. So, um, Noxygen, as the redeemer of the spoken words for 3K, you get to choose what style I do it in. <laughs> An angry garden hub, okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> Let me think. How am I going to do this? Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. I... I have an idea. Zark says, oh well, yes, yeah. <laughs> All right, Noxygen, this is spoken word in the style of an angry garden gnome. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thank, thank you, Noxygen. Hope you enjoyed my rendition of an Angry garden gnome. You scared the cat. <laughs> I scared the cat. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, I I scared the cat. <laughs> oh, the poor thing got scared. <laughs> Here, hold on. But let me go and like hug her really quick. I feel bad. <laughs> hold on. I'll be back. All right, she's fine. She's fine. I had to coax her out of the bed. See, Xenophobia said sushi heard that and dipped. And Zark redeemed spoken word as well. Drunk leprechaun. Drunk. What does a leprechaun sound like? <laughs> Noxia said that was the best thing to happen all day. Oh man. Uh, what does a a leprechaun sound like? Uh, pick something else, Zarg. I can't... I'm not feeling inspired about that. <laughs> and I am out of my outsider, apparently. You know, I was just looking at this can and I was like, that actually matches, right? Doesn't that match it? Fairly close, right? The Donut Pat that swells says, getting some free monthly channel points, nice. Eeyore? Oh gosh, uh, I know who that character is, but I've never watched him. Oh my gosh. This is, an this is another... Another, um, another consequence of not growing up in a Western society. <laughs> hey, look, matches quite well. That, that, that could be a key set color, right? <laughs> Looks pretty interesting, huh? Maybe I can make a key set with this. All right. Glendale Shoes says Taiwan number one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Zark, give give me something else. Uh, low pitched and depressed. Low pitched. You want me to do this in a low pitched and depressed manner? Okay. Uh. Sure. Um. Okay, <laughs> okay, let's try it, let's try it. We, we can try low-pitched and, and depressed. Sumex says lucky charm. Oh yeah, there we go. Low-pitched and depressed for Zark. <laughs> there we go. Noxygen says you have to put it in the dots mode for that. <laughs> golf, Sark says golf clap. <laughs> Thanks, Sark. All right. There we go. Let's do this. Don't have pass I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised why the cat got spooked. 
<laughs> All right, let's see. Let's let's go back to what I was doing. What was I doing? I think I think I was just drinking. Don't remember. Don't remember. Oh yeah, I was um keyboard layout editor. That's what I was doing. Here we go. Keyboard layout editor. I made it to row two. Uh, row two. So, so, what, where did I put it? No, here we go. Yeah, row two. Row two. So, t row two goes from two zero, two eight, two nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, perfect. No bad. GMK Outsider is a go. Yes. <laughs> this will be the next. Merlin design set will be inspired by this can by this can of cider that I'm drinking but I probably can't call it GMK outside I should just call it GMK cider <laughs> yeah GMK apple juice it, it tastes just like apple juice like 5% alcohol isn't isn't something I can I can taste to be honest Oh well. Okay. Anyway, let's let's get this done. Here we go. Back to the boring part. Labeling each keys one by one. GMK Apple Orchard. Ooh, that's actually a good name. It's actually a good name. I like it. All right. I'll I'll start designing the kit tonight. Let's see what happens. You know, as 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 you guys know, I'm still trying to get some traction on GMK Gold Rush, and hopefully trying to get GMK Merlin out again. But we'll see. We'll see. Oh, that's we're not doing that. We're still going back here. So three zero, three two, nine ten eleven twelve. Okay. To Diamond Hands. Diamond Hands reminds me of Michael Jackson's glove. Oh wait, there's notice my music's not playing anymore. Ever since the, ever since we did the spoken word. So here we go. You want DSA Miami Dolch? Oh yeah, that, that was a good set. So I'm still waiting for my god speed from drop. It's like dog speed right now. <laughs> or god god slow. Like I, I I already have a tracking number, but based on my checking this morning, it still did not register any movement. Emu50 is raiding with a party of three. Thank you. Thank you so much for your raid and sending people my way. If you guys are new to this channel, I I do keyboard builds, I do keyboard news, and today, Tuesday nights, I do keyboard software building, I guess. This is what it's called. I'm currently taking the banana split, a board from the van keyboards, and adding via support to it. So this is this is the build that it's currently in. One of my oldest builds actually, and I haven't really to be honest, I don't in fact, I don't ever type on this. <laughs> Here we go. Z Teflon says, think 6v5? 6v5? Do you mean think 6.5v2 versus Vega? Um, I still have yet to build my think 6.5, and I have yet to receive my Vega, but once I build both I'll probably be able to tell more but just on paper alone the Vega does look like this it looks like it's gonna be the board that sounds and feels better but the Think 6.5 is in my opinion gonna be the board that looks better so I guess it depends on what you're going for let's see 
All right, this bottom row right here, four zero four one four two four five. rest of the keys are 48, 49, 48, 49, 11, 412, and 412. And with that, we have a layout that's sufficient for a standard 60. Uh, one thing with Via is that Wilbo mandates that you have these colored correctly so that it shows up all nice on your key tester and like on, on your key map when you have Via working. So the accents, the alphas, and the mods all have to be different colors. Or different colors from each other. So let's just do that really quick. Okay, perfect. There you go. So, um, because this is a board that supports multiple layouts, oh, let, let me just split it up again. Let me pull it up again. Banana split. Actually, hold on. I think I found the, the layouts right there. There we go. That's the layout that I want. Banana split. All right, we need to be able to support all these layouts in VIA. The way, the way to do that is to have a concept of groups and options. So the way we do that is to, crap, my VIA key map on this board does not have arrow keys. So I'm gonna have to swap out the board again. Not a problem. Let's, let's go back to the board I built on Saturday. This guy right here. You know, they say that carbon fiber is supposed to be stiffer. You know, to be some, one of the more stiffer plates, but yet this board has a nice amount of flex that I'm enjoying quite a lot. All right, so anyway, we need to there we go, Let's, we need to make some room. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm basically kinda gonna copy this. I'm gonna add all of these different layouts. Like I don't need to worry about stepped caps lock over here on the left, cause stepped caps lock, regular caps lock, it's all the same. But I do need to consider split backspace, split left shift, right shift, space bars, and all all these options here right here and ISO as much as I dread it but I do have to support ISO so yeah here this is what we'll do we'll just kind of copy it kind of copy it let's start there let's start there okay mm. next up we want an ISO enter and make sure that's the same color as the accent. There we go, perfect. Colliptic, Collip, I think that's your name. Colliptic wants a sup dude, sup to you too. Thanks for joining in. Let's see, okay. Got the ISO key support added in. Now we want to do the left shift. The split left shift is 1.25 followed by a 1U. Like so. And then we want to do the right shift. This one's 1 1.75 followed by a 
A1U, like so. Okay, let's keep looking at this. Um, from the looks of that, okay, see? So from the looks of it, it doesn't seem like, doesn't seem like it's, it doesn't seem like it supports HHKB, right? Like, look at that, there's, I don't see any, any HHKB bottom row, yet when you look at QMK, there is a layout macro called HHKB banana. So that would imply that, actually, you know what? Let's just, let's look at it. HHKB banana. That's not HHKB. That is not HHKB at all. What the heck? Okay, never mind. I guess it's not HHKB. Sound toxin stats were 3 1 and 4 10 skipped on purpose. 3 1 and 4 10. Yes, that is correct. Because basically we are copying whatever the layout macro says. So here, see? It goes. See, 3 1 is skipped. Because on a standard layout 60, 3 1, I believe, is reserved for that split key for um, this guy. This guy right here. This 1U key for split left shift. And 410, I believe, is going to be one of these 1U keys instead. That's why. But, yeah, we'll get there when we get there. So the next up is we need to... We need to come up with these space bars right here. Oh man, look at this, look. Look at this shift row right here. You can have split right shift, or you can move that 1.75U key over by another. So, wow, that is, that is interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Let's just make this look look nicer here. Let's do Okay, so that would be the 1.75U and then followed by two keys. Okay, let's do that. should cover it. So we have the split right shift and the split right shift that has the 1.75U on the left. Okay, that's good. We're good. Next up, we need to replicate these space bars. So the first combo is 2.75 then... Okay, I think I get it. Copy paste. 2.75 followed by uh, 1.75. Oh, not 1.75, 1.25, followed by a 2.25. There we go. And the other combo is have having the the 2.25 swapped with the 2.75. So we'll just copy and paste it. So these are effectively the two. Two spacebar combos. Well, 
like that. And then the last support is just... So you can either have four 1.25U keys or five 1U keys. Okay, that's not too difficult. Let's do five 1U keys. There we go. Easy. Easy peasy. And actually these keys need to be the same. There we go. Okay. Okay, we are good. Just move these around a bit. There we go. Okay. So earlier on, I mentioned that the way to do these is to have a notion of groups and options. So the way you want to do this is basically we'll, we'll go and identify groups. So I've already talked about the groups before. You have your backspace group. You have your enter group, you have your left shift group, your right shift group, your spacebar group, and your bottom right mods group. So all of those are different groups. Excuse me. And they're labeled from zero to whatever. And the way you label them is actually based on how you read English. So that's left to right, top to bottom. So based on that, the very first group is going to be the backspace group. So we want to label the group in the bottom right, like so. Um, and additional thing you need to do is also add in an option number. So in this group, in this backspace group, there are two options. The first option is the base layout. So that's going to be option zero, so zero, zero. The second option is the split backspace. Still part of the same group, right? Because it's still the backspace group. And we label it option one. So then we'll do the same numbering as we go down top to bottom, left to right. The next one is going to be this guy right here. Enter key. So this one's going to be the next group, right? Group one, option zero, because it's the base layout. We'll do the same here. Group one, option one, like so. Then the next group is left shift. This is group two, like so. Next group, right shift. So this one's gonna have a couple more options here, right? So you have the very, the very first one, the base one is zero. Then you want this guy to be three one. Then you're like, wait, Merlin, the original shift is only, what, 2.75U plus one, th so it's 2.75U, yet what you have here is 1.75U plus two 1U keys, putting that at 3.75. Aren't you missing 1U? That's true. So in fact, you have to go over here to 311, and also label that as three zero like that. So it matches like the same width. So then we do this here, bottom guy, also three two. There we go. Next group is space bar. Four one, four two, and the last group is this right mods right there. Just five zero. Okay, so I um, recently worked on a board that had many, many groups. And for some reason, I think it capped out at eight groups. I couldn't make any more. So I don't know if that's something I'm doing wrong myself or something with Via. Um, for those interested, that board is the Saturn 60, or the Titan 60 that goes in the Saturn 60 board. I'll have to look, I'll have to take a look at it again sometime in the future. But here we go. 
At this point, we have all the groups and options. But the next problem is this thing right here, right? Now, as you've noticed, on the top left of each key, we have the, group, the row number and the column number. We need to make sure that all of these option keys right here have the same stuff. And once again, you can go back, you can go back to the QMK firmware code and figure that out. So for example, right here, layout 60 ANSI, right? 0C and 0D are the last two keys. We want to go look at HHKB banana, which shows that there's an additional key there. I believe that's 2, 2D. Is that 2D? Yep, it's 2D. So that's A, B, C, D, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's 213. Like so. There we go. And Sound Toxin mentioned it earlier, but here we go. On the left shift, the small 1U is actually the 3 1, and the 1.25U is actually the 3 0, like so. And you can see that over here, see? 3 0, 3 1, just like that. And apparently, the space bar, no matter which way you split it, the key on the left is always 4-4, four, four. this key on the right is always 4-6, and the middle one is 4-5. 4-4, 4-5, 4-6. Four, 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 Super simple. Four, 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 five, four, six. There we go, okay. So those are the easiest ones to do. The difficult ones are this ISO enter key. So I like to pull up the ISO key really quick, like so. How much do I charge a customer to build a keyboard? Um, it, it, it actually varies depending on size, but you can, you can actually see all of my latest services over on Reddit. Here, let me pull up the link for you. Here we go. There you go, posting it in chat. You can see all my latest services and prices on that link right there. Um, I am backed up till April though, so if you need something done ASAP, I don't think I'll be able to help you there. Okay, let's continue doing this. Continue doing this. Oh, xenophobia. There is a command. Thank you. Thanks for adding that in. Okay, let's see. Let's go look at the ISO. ISO and ANSI. Let's compare the two. Um, you know? I think it's... Same. Say one C, one D, two B, two C. Oh, that makes it easy. That makes it really easy. Okay. That's yeah. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. So A, B, C, right? Wait a sec. That doesn't make sense.
So it seems like it still shares the same enter key. That's 2C. So that's 212. Still the same enter key. But what is that? What is that extra key here? What is that extra key? It can't be 211. What? Let me just do some counting here. Some counting is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. What? Okay, I don't know how that. I don't know how that's actually done. Where's that? Where that extra ISO key is coming from? Let me just count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Top two rows have 15. This next row has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. You had to guess it's 113. Yeah, because it's the 1D, right? That's what I'm thinking, too. Could be the 1D, just that this layout macro might not be done properly. Alright, so let's talk about why Xenophobia thinks it's 113, okay? So typically, by typically I mean from what I've observed over the years, is that the ISO that when you convert ANSI to ISO in terms of where the keys are, typically a designer will keep the actual enter key for ANSI and ISO to be the same, right, 212. And since an ISO key takes up, takes up the previous pipe position, that key then turns into that 1U that's beside it. So that's, that's, that's the most logical guess. That's why he thinks that way. So, without further informa information and me being lazy, I'm going to agree with that. Alright. So, next up, next up we need to figure out group 3 here. Group 3. So, let's pick a... Here. Okay, let's see. A lot of this is going to be guess and check, to be honest with you. But here, we know this guy's 311. Three fourteen. Yeah, we can absolutely guess three fourteen, like so. And oops. Oh, wait, wait, 3D is 313, sorry. A, B, C, D, 10, 11, 12, 30, yep, 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 okay. There we go, we know this one right there. That's pretty basic. This next one, this next one is the problem. I'm gonna guess this is also 311, 312, 313. Should still be the same. Okay. 
Okay. And this bottom row, bottom row should should be easy. See, 4, 8, 4, 9, 4, 10, 4, 11, 4, 12. Yep. 4, 8, 4, 9, 4, 10, 4, 11, 4, 12. All right, and with that, we should be done. I'm actually gonna sign in with GitHub and save this so I don't lose it in case anything happens. So with that said, um, we now have sufficient information to create this portion of the via JSON. So give me a few moments here while I pull up another repo. Okay, all right, so this is a completely different repo from QMK firmware. VIA and QMK are separate repos, so you don't, so if you want to actually put VIA support in, you need to be in this correct one. So let's find the existing van keyboards. Oh wait, hold on, let me just, I'm on master. There we go. Switch to new branch, banana split, perfect. We want to go to the van keyboards. Here we go. Minivan.json. Okay. Um, Cause I'm lazy. I'm also gonna copy and paste that. I'm gonna rename the file banana split. Banana split, there we go. Dot JSON, perfect. And see, so this maintains our vendor ID. I believe the product ID was 8870. We're good. And the lighting actually, the lighting was, yeah, let's see, what did, what did I do for my other board? One up keyboards. Oh, actually, I have the documentation. Well, why am I making this difficult? So I just want QMK underscore backlight. Lighting, QMK underscore backlight. There we go. That's what we want. Um, in terms of the actual matrix size, we have to go to config.h. 5 by 14. Okay. Okay. So this portion right here, this is where we can, what's this? Usually this goes on top, but it doesn't really matter, but that's just the way I like to do it. There, um, let's not worry too much about that first, but let us actually take out the key map. Right there. And the information that we want for this is actually that keyboard layout editor file that we had. So here we go. What we want to do is go to raw data. In instead of this, you want to click on download JSON on the bottom right here and open up that file. Like so. Take all that, copy, and paste. 
and boom, that, sh that should work. Um, this label stuff, this is how you, this is how you label all of your groups and options. So here, there, there, there are two ways to do this. If you simply set them up like this, right? If you just set up this array where you just put the label name, this creates a toggle switch. It's either on or off. So the first one is split backspace, right? We want split backspace. The second group is ANSI or ISO. So ISO. The next group is split left shift. And the next group after that is split right shift. Okay, all right. So just to show you guys what I'm talking about here, let's go back to Via. Right, let's go back to Via. Um, if you go to the layouts menu on the top left here, see? If you do it the way that I've programmed it so far, you'll get these toggle switches. So you got split backspace, you got ISO enter, and you got split left shift. If you put it in as an array, you will get a drop down like so. So this is what, what we wanna do. This next item will be an array. And the first item in the array will actually be the label. So the, the label of this is going to be right shift. Right shift. Actually, hold on. Let me look at, oh yes, okay. So you do have to put it in brackets. That, there we go, that's what I was missing brackets like so right shift and then the first item is okay I guess the very first one is just regular split right shift so let's just call it split split the second option is this shifted right shift. So I guess you could call that arrows. Yeah, let's just call it arrows. Arrows. Okay, that's fine. Next up is spacebar. And I just realized that I messed up because... Okay. So the way that I have it right now, split and arrows, but, but we also want regular. So regular is just 2.75U. There we go, 2.75U split. Then spacebar is gonna have 6.25U. And then All right, I'm just gonna, gonna call it split one and split two, split one and split two. There we go. And then the last group is going to be bottom right, bottom right mods. First one is standard. Next one is 5x1u. There we go. And with that, we should have a via JSON that that works. Okay. So let's go back to via. Let's go back to via here. Let's go back to via. Um, go to your design tab. If you do not have a if you do not have a design tab, go to your settings tab and enable show design tab like so. All right. So go to your design tab, click load. 
and load up load up that JSON file that we just created. In our case, it is banana split.json. Um, hold on. I'm still calling it minivan, so let me just edit that really quick. Banana split. There we go. Okay. So with that said, load it up. Lighting should have required property extends. What? 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 Okay, I screwed something up here. Let me just go back here. Really? Oh, I see what I. Well, I see what I did wrong. There we go. Let's keep it simple. Keep it simple. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So we have the banana split now. See, so if you if you did this correctly, all of this should show up nice. And it does. It does. Shows up really good. Okay. And next thing you want to do is actually Let's click on show matrix just so if you want to see how this PCV is like put together. There it goes. See that? But the real test is when you click on the configure tab, right? You click on the configure tab. You take the board that you flashed, right? Like earlier I flashed it with, with, with like all this. If you plug it in, if you plug it in, this should all work, right? Hopefully this should all work. You guys can see it. Here we go. Let's plug it in. And if I did this right, Via should detect it. Actually, it's it's more dramatic if there's only one one keyboard in there. Let's plug this in. Loading. <laughs> and as you can see, something is very off here. Something is very, very off. So, uh, oof. <laughs> something, something is bad. So let's, let's go back to our keyboard layout editor and make sure everything is properly accounted for. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm just checking this off screen right now, but it looks like everything is there. But what the heck? What the heck happened there? Don't know what happened. Okay, so for the most part, it's good. It's, it's got something to do with my groups. So I bet you, I bet you, it's how I've done my labels. And I think I know why. Let me just reconfigure this. I think I know why. All right, let's try that again. Let's load it up. And if I got this correct, I'll tell you what what I did. Whew, did it. I did it. Okay, so this is what I did, guys. This is, this is what I messed up. Here, let me show you really quick. Okay, so, um, how you craft this is very, 
is very important. What I had earlier was that I had this this label property on line 9 instead of within the layouts property and that's what screwed it up. That's what happened. So I just had to move it from outside the layouts property to inside the layouts property. And everything worked out just like that. So yeah, it's all good. The very drunk monkey says hello, hello to you too. Ilsa says I'm making my first board next week with silk y'all. Should I use films and foam or should I add some banana split switches? They are my fave. Um, it's up to you to use if you want to use films and foam. Um, you know, it just depends on what sound that you're trying to get, what, how you like them to feel, and all that. And yeah, here we go. Everything works. I got this into Via. Um, since this board has no lights, I can't actually show any of the fancy lighting. But let's check and make sure that the layouts were done correctly. Let's see, can I do split vac space? Yes, I can. ISO enter. Yes, I can. Left shift. Yep. That's good. Right shift. 2.75 split. And arrows. Okay, good. That works out. Uh, bottom right modifier or spacebar 6.25 split one and split two good good bottom right modifiers are standard and five by one U perfect okay that works out very well for me um, let's actually do my actual layout that you see here and let's change my key map uh, how do I want to do this? Okay, this is going to be my MO key. MO1. Good, good, good. And this is going to be my toggle key. This will be toggle 2. There we go. Layer 1 needs function keys or function, function row keys. Let's do that. And then delete. Perfect. I want that one to be my reset key. Reset. Uh, what else? Oh yeah. Z, X, C, V, B, N, M. That'll be mute. Volume minus, volume plus. Okay, we're good. And for layer two, this is where I want my arrows. So that's up, down, left, and right. And this guy's going to be transparent. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So now... So now... <coughs> pardon me. Why is this key not working? Configure. That was supposed to be our app. Okay, that's why. Let's do that. Let's change that to our GUI. Or our win. Perfect. Do key tester again. Shift. Oh, wait. That's the same key. I want our alt. There we go, okay. Let's test that again. Perfect, okay, see? So right now, that's regular mods, but when I press the toggle key, they should turn to arrows. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Toggle, toggle back, back to mods, toggle to arrows. Great, okay. This, this is my key map, this is, this is how I like it. All right, guys, just to summarize what we did today, um, we took a very, very old PCB, a banana split from the Van Keyboards, which is currently already in QMK. We took it and we put VIA support on it, this guy right here, and we, we were successful. So yeah, if you guys happen to have one of these PCBs, congratulations, you can now easily change your key map.
All right, guys, thanks for joining in, and I will see you on Thursday when I unbox my Thing 6.5. All right, guys, have a good rest of your evening and a good rest of your week. Goodbye, guys.